Hey Old Hammers, this is Brett from Solo Old Hammer Gaming. I wasn't going to say anything uh, about this, but I've watched a few YouTube videos lately on Warhammer the Old World and how excited people are getting for it and yada yada yada. Um, as you can tell, I'm not really that excited for it. Uh, I was going to have a look at it and then the straw that broke the camel's back was the other day when I learned that 20 mil bases have been scrapped and they're coming out with a standard size of 25 mil. Um, we yet to see what that does to say ogres, uh, minotaurs, stuff like that that was mounted on a 40 mil base. Um, cavalry has been updated. They're going to a 30 by 50 or something. Um, yeah, rebasing sucks. Uh, I am not a competitive player. I don't play in tournaments or anything like that. And I really, really feel for those that do, to be quite honest. Um, these changes just seem like a bit of a money grab to me as a, a, a pay-as-you-play. Uh, saw the same thing with um, 40k when they updated to 32 millimeter bases. Um, so it wouldn't also surprise me if they didn't cut down the the size of the battlefield, the standard like six by four, which is what the realm of battle boards came out in, um, and then they cut down the the size of the battlefield for that in 40k so all those people that had spent so much time painting realm of battle boards if they were going to take those to a tournament to show them off and even with friends like i've got i've got mates that um wanted to game on the new size table like the new s the suggested size tables for the board and i was like no bugger that i've i've painted a six by four and that's what I'm going to use. So, <laughs> but I really feel for people like that. Um, the whole thing about oh, you can just get movement trays that'll bump the troops out to to the right size. Why should you? Why should you? To be quite honest, um, that's just more cost. And let's face it, like this hobby's not getting any cheaper. And um, that's. That's why I think I like Old Hammer so much, because <laughs> my Skellies, my Dwarves, my Norse, they're on 20 mil bases. My Empire will be on 20 mil bases. Uh, my Orcs, my Beastmen, my Chaos, they're on 25s, because that's what it says in the book. And that's what they'll stay on. So... I have heard a lot of people saying that, oh, the 20 suck because it was so hard to to um, rank troops up. Well, with a bit of forethought and planning, that wasn't a problem. The, that was never, ever a problem because you just had to plan a bit better. And the old figures, they didn't have all these bells and whistles that had attached to what, like, the newer miniatures have, like, let's, um, well, let's take uh, the Griff Overwall miniature for Blood Bowl as a, a prime example. I didn't like the, the third edition Griff Overwall miniature with the, with the hi-hat. Jervis Johnson himself said that they shouldn't have gone away from the more, like, football player style and try to turn it into uh, Warhammer 4th edition fantasy battle looking sort of player and now for the second second season of Blood Bowl Griff Overbold's got like a an eagle or a hawk or some bloody thing hanging off his arm that'd definitely make it harder to base up on a 20 to be quite honest even a 25 because there's so many bells and whistles that they want to attach on here now to make the figure look cool and added extras and all that. I'm over that. This is a rank and file game. 
This is basically trying to um, get as men get as get as much paint on the figure as quickly as possible, so I can get it on the table. And I'm not going to bother with that. So yeah. I'm gonna miss the twenties, and if I pick up the rules by by themselves, I don't know about the box set yet. Um, there's a lot of talk that it'll be just old sprues and stuff that have just been um, not even retooled, and I'm okay with that. If as long as they're not retooled, so that way I can still fit them on a twenty if I need to. So like um, Bretonians, because if I wasn't gonna use the the old Britannians, because they're expensive at the moment, because they're unavailable. But uh, I was just going to use like Perry's or Warlord or something like that, because that's what I'll be using for my Empire, because I want Pikes. Um, I just yeah, it's just flabbergasted me. I don't, I don't understand that, because. Orcs, Beastmen, Chaos Warriors, all that. You could understand the 25mm base because they were, um, they're, they're bigger in the beastry, but they're not all the same. And as for, oh, the extra room is really good because you can do something with the base. What? What can you do with the base? Put a friggin' mushroom on it or something. From the, some uptooled sprue. Nah, not doing it. So. It just seems like a pay as you pay as you play, like and as I said, I'm not affected by it because I don't competitive game. My games, to me, the narrative is more important than the than the uh, competitiveness of it. So, yeah, twenty millimeter bases. So <laughs> Goodbye, dear friend. But hopefully, you can still get them on eBay and that. So, the rules. Are they going to dumb it down even more? When they took away cool willpower and intelligence stats, and they combined it into, or everything was just combined into leadership, I was okay with that. That was, um, it just seemed, it saved more ink. And, um, Nine times out of ten, all those stats were the same anyway. So, yeah, I um, I don't mind that. That didn't seem like a dumbing down to me. But when fourth edition came along, I couldn't form shield wall anymore. I couldn't form square. I couldn't um. Only Bretonians could do an uh, arrowhead formation. Only Bretonians could form a wedge. Um, there was so much maneuvering and stuff that was lost just to simplify it to just uh, line them up push them across the table and let them have at it and roll bucketfuls of dice uh, the whole um, if you lose a combat and you fail your leadership then you break and if you get caught that um, I think that was just put in so they could resolve combats quicker honestly but um i do i do like the pushback and the the follow up and whether you hold or not or if you break automatically if psychology means something in old hammer rules at the moment especially third edition so yeah that's that's a bit different and with the rewriting of the rules, I'm just worried that they're going to... 10th edition Warhammer 40k is nearly on us. And there's certain stats on there that are missing now. So I'm wondering if they're going to do the same thing for the old world. Yeah, not impressed. Not impressed. I just... For the sake of the competitive players that are going to take the time of rebasing everything... I just hope the rules are good. Oh, yeah, like I said, I might pick them up and see what they're like, but... Yeah. I'm quite happy with Old Hammer, the way it is. And the other thing that amuses me is... <laughs> I've watched a couple of YouTube um, 
reactions and that. And people have been saying, oh, Britannians are back, Britannians are back. Oh, where well, did you read this little bit that says um, Footnotes? Oh, that's no biggie. That is definitely no biggie to me. <laughs> We've got Footnotes in 4th edition, in 3rd um, edition, sorry, the best edition. We have them. They're already there. The Citadel Miniatures released some Knights on Foot. So they put the they put them in there. So <laughs> that's that's no biggie. We've we've already got that. I'm pretty sure that the uh, foot knights for Britonia and and um I'd have to double check my Empire book for the fourth edition, but the Reeks Guard could be taken on foot, definitely in third edition. I'm I just can't remember for fourth edition. I'd have to go and grab my book and have a look, but like. I know in 4th edition the Empire could take uh, Ogres, Dwarves, Halflings as well. But you could do that in 3rd edition. It was, I think it was 6th edition where they lost, where the Empire lost that. I was an Empire player as you could tell. As you can, as you can tell. But, um, hmm. It just, <laughs> that just blows my mind. It's like, well, we've already got that. That's no biggie, like couple of times, y'all. <laughs> Britannian Knights have been slugging it out on foot since <laughs> 1988 or something. <laughs> so <laughs> Which brings me to the, the other thing that I've seen is um, all of them seem to hone in on um, on the Warhammer, the old world map, and it's got a hold, like a dwarven hold in up north. The Norse Dwarves, and they're all, um, oh, wouldn't that be awesome, you know, Norse Dwarves, Norse Dwarves, Norse Dwarves, we've got them in uh, Old Hammer, so we've had them for since day dot, and we've had real Norse too, not Chaos Lackeys, or, yeah, Chaos Marauders, the running around that's a that's in they're in the chaos army the norse army are norse they are based on the vikings from well well everybody knows what a viking is but that's what they're based on and yeah they're not chaos lap dogs they do trade with the norse dwarves they do fight with the norse dwarf they fight with them and against them basically because they love battle white dwarf 107 and so you've got to check for that. So we've already got Norse Dwarves, and I can't see the Norse Dwarves come make, making an appearance in the old world. I really can't. Number one, they're not on uh, Warhammer Total War, and I can't see Games Workshop doing that. But <laughs> you never know. I never thought they'd end Warhammer Fantasy Battle, but there you go. Because... Um, that was the other thing that I saw, especially about the Britannian Knights. It was, um, oh, just write it, write it in the law, write it in the law, do it, Games Workshop, do it, write it in the law. Well, isn't that what's got them in, the tro in trouble in the first fucking place? By writing law that was just total crap? So, I don't know what to think about that. Don't write it anymore. You've got a timeline that you're going to use. Honour it from those that come before you and wrote this game and leave it that way and just settle it in there. Now, army size. I'm not sure how big these armies are going to be, to be quite honest. I really don't know. Because... Third edition, the armies are not too, not too bad sized, to be quite honest. Fourth edition, they're around the same around the same, 5th the same, 4th um, and 5th is basically, like 5th you could probably call 4.2 or 4.5 or something, but 6th edition, yeah, I sort of fell out after 6th and then had a little look in the door of 8th and the size of the armies then were just ridiculous, um, yeah, there was no way I was going to have huge blocks, so that was out, but, um, yeah, so, 
that makes me wonder. Especially with the... Because it'll be size of, size of armies and rebasing that just makes it feel like a pay-as-you-play. So, yeah. Basically, in in rounding up or in summing up not rounding up but summing up I'm I'm not too excited for the old world I don't really care um, I like third edition I love third edition third edition is my favoriteest edition and do yourselves a favor if you can get a copy of the rules read through them they may seem clunky and everything like that but you can house rule whenever you want so you can get rid of the reserve phase and just take from fourth and fifth edition with a march move um i don't i i play the rules as they were written because that's what i'm used to and that's what i want to learn again so but yeah not really not really interested i'll probably i'll have a looky um I don't know what my mates are doing with it. I don't know if they're going to have a look at it or anything. They're, um, <laughs> they've got the 40k bug so hard they probably won't even care to look. <laughs> so, <laughs> but time will tell. But um, yeah, other than that, I just yeah, just wanted to have a my thoughts and views, and they're totally my personal thoughts and views. I'm not happy with the move to bases, and yeah stuff that not doing it I don't competitive game anyway I'm gonna I'm quite happy to stick with me one book for every single army and a white dwarf edition oh well, there's two two white dwarf editions because there's a familiar army and another white dwarf issue and um, yeah I'm happy with that quite happy with that I'm getting ready to do the siege battle I'm just going through and working out what else what else I need to paint and buy um, Got most of the dwarves there. I need a halfling though. Got to get a halfling. But I'm trying to get a halfling for under 60 bucks. <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks Evo. <laughs> I suppose I could go after market, but yeah. I wouldn't mind a, um, a few GW ones from back in the day. But yeah. But other than that, guys, thanks for climbing to the uh, Old Hammer Mountain with me. Thank you very much for subscribing. I'm uh, actually fiddling around with uh, DaVinci Resolve today uh, to do this do this video, hoping that the sound quality is a bit better. Um, that was a uh, yeah, that was a bit of an annoyance. I did not know what to do <laughs> for the sound, so hopefully I'll fix that up. I've watched a stack of um, <laughs> tutorials and things, but yeah, that's all all part of learning and. Yeah, wanting to make my channel better, so, um, yeah, just learning that today, so thanks for climbing the mountain, thank you to all my subscribers sticking around, and, uh, definitely guys, stay cool, well, stay even cooler, stay old, Hammer.